Why not? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I am so proud of Health Canada and the civil services that have, have worked so hard to expedite approval of test kits for use in Canada. In fact, we've gone from uh, an average of six months timeline to approve test kits to uh, one to seven days, and we are working diligently to make sure that all of the tests that are uh, being sought to, to be used in Canada receive the appropriate Health Canada authority. Ms. Gallant. Testing for COVID-19 antibodies shows how many people have already had the virus and recovered. Why doesn't the government want Canadians to know if they've already had the virus? Honourable Minister. Well, Mr. Speaker, I reject the premise of that question. In fact, we're so proud of our academics and scientists here in Canada that have come together to form a serological survey consortium, which is actually going to allow us to have a better understanding of the exposure of COVID-19 in Canada and Canada's uh, Canadians' relative immunity. Ms. Gallant. Other G7 countries are testing for COVID-19 antibodies. Why isn't Canada? Well, Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, underlying that question uh, may indicate that the member uh, doesn't uh, understand the most recent science, which is that we don't understand a lot yet about the immunity of COVID-19. We know that people who have exposed, been exposed do have some antibodies, but what is unclear as of yet is what kind of uh, uh, immunity that gives them. Thanks. Ms. Gallant. Canadians want to get safely back to work. Why won't the government allow testing for COVID-19 antibodies so Canadians can get back to work safely? They're, going, they're using the same tests that are being tested here in other countries, and they're being allowed to go back to work in other countries. The Honourable Minister. Madam Speaker, I'm not sure uh, what information the member is pulling from, but I will tell you right now that the question of how we protect people in the workforce is of paramount importance, not just to the government, by the way, but to the workers and their families and to the sectors that employ them. We only have to look at uh, sectors in our own particular country that have been hard hit, and there is no easy answer, but I will tell you, Mr. Speaker, we're working diligently with all sectors to answer that very question. Ms. Gallant. Why won't the government waive its 18% tariff on masks until domestic production meets pre-COVID-19 price points? The Honourable Minister. I want to thank the Honourable Member for that really important question. Uh, Canada, along with uh, other like-minded countries, have committed to making sure that our supply chains, particularly for medical equipment and supplies, remain open uh, so that, uh, so that these important, uh, important supplies get into uh, the hands of uh, our respective governments and people. Ms. Gallant. How many pairs of surgical gloves will be produced daily in Canada as of May 1st of this year? The Honourable Minister. Speaker, there are numerous items of PPE being produced in Canada at the current time. Reagent, face shield, hand sanitizer, gowns and vents. We have complementary supply chains from international markets as well as domestic markets. Ms. Gallant. Are any surgical gloves in production in Canada right now? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, as I said, we've got complementary supply chains operating at the same time in order to keep Canadian health care workers safe. Thank you. Ms. Gallant. When does the government expect to have enough surgical gloves for professional health-related practitioners to get back to work? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I can confirm that we have ordered 1 billion nitrile gloves and we have received over 12 million pairs of such gloves in Canada for delivery to frontline health care workers. Ms. Gallant. Two government planes returned to Canada from China to get uh, PPE. Yet, uh, so they returned to Canada empty. Yet, a telecoms company was able to get 1.5 million masks. Why is that? Well, Minister. Mr. Speaker, I can confirm that we've had 16 flights returning to Canada full with cargo. There was one flight that returned without federal cargo, but the flight did have other cargo on board. Monsieur Gould. Merci, M. le Président. Hier, on apprenait qu'au mois de mars, le gouvernement libéral a donné l'assurance à des parlementaires que l'accord de libre-échange Canada-États-Unis-Mexique n'allait pas entrer en vigueur avant...